Hey yogis, it's Sina here, the Yoga Apothecary. In today's flow, we continue the A to Z of well-being series. N stands for narrative. So grab some water and your towel and I'll meet you on the mat. There is an old adage that everyone has a book inside them. Life is incredibly complex. There are a lot of things going on in our environment and in our lives at all times. In order to hold on to these experiences, we need to make meaning out of them. One way we do this is by structuring our lives into stories or narratives. Narratives help us to make sense of events in our lives and to change our perceptions, including our perception of ourselves. A few years ago, Tara Parker Pope wrote a featured article in the New York Times called writing your way to happiness. Having a narrative practice, writing down our stories can improve our mood, mitigate chronic illness, as well as serve as a memory booster. If this is intriguing to you, consider carving out time most days to reflect on the events in your life. Consider all of the relevant areas of your life, such as your career, your relationships, hobbies, and your health-related goals. Imagine what your best possible future might be like and write your future story. Set your intention. In yoga, we can think of a sequence of postures as a story of expression as we move our body paired with the rhythm of our breath. It has a beginning, a middle, and an ending. During our journey on the mat, there may be a peak pose that is revealed that is only made possible by the postures that came before. Today, we will work towards arm pressure pose, Bhuja Padasana, which looks like a frog suspended in air, or at least that's what some of the yogis say. And with that, we'll get started on our backs. As we begin, we're gonna come down to our backs. As we come to a Supta Baddha Kanasana, if this is not comfortable for you, Opening the knees wide, soles of the feet touch. You can keep your knees bent, feet flat on the mat in a restorative bridge position. If this feels comfortable, we come into this sacred space this time for our practice. Not thinking about the days, to-dos, any tasks, worries. Just coming into this present moment. Your hands can rest on your hips. Maybe one on the belly, one on the heart space. And tune into how your body feels. Notice any tension or tightness and the subtle ways the body is moving with your breath. Touching these toes, heels to touch. As we begin to lengthen our breath, inhale through the nose, fill up. Take in all the air you think you can, spread those ribs. And when you're ready, exhale it out. Another just like that. Inhale through the nose, fill up. Spread those ribs wide. Use the breath traveling through the body. And open the mouth. Maybe you push or sigh it out. As we begin our ujjayi breath, a victorious breath, inhale through the nose, seal your lips. Exhale through the nose, create a seashell swirly sound in the back of your throat, constricting the throat like you're fogging up a mirror. Take it twice. We'll take it once together. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Although we are not in a child's pose, please know that a child's pose, balasana, is always available to you at any time in this practice as I guide from the side. When you're ready, use your hands to close the knees. Reposition the feet for a moment. Take a breath in. Tee out the arms. And as you exhale, just let the knees rock onto the right, leaving the hips rooted towards the mat, dropping the knees to the right however they land. Maybe bring your gaze over the left shoulder. Inhale, draw the knees center. Exhale, drop them to the left. Maybe you gaze to the right. Notice any tension or tightness. 
We'll come back through center one more time each side. We let them drop on the exhale to the right. We draw them to center, breathe in. Exhale, dropping them to the left. Inhale, center. From here, draw the knees to the chest. Give them a squeeze. Maybe a soft rock right and left. And then begin to rock your way up to the top of your mat. We'll come into a 90-90. So as you can see, my right knee is bent with the right uh, calf coming to the side of the mat. I have creating an L shape with my front leg, flexing my feet. This is very good for your piriformis. You're welcome to stay here, grow tall through your crown. Or if you wish to take this further, I'm tenting the fingertips about two o'clock towards the left knee, lengthening through the spine. I'm not arching through the back, growing tall through the crown, sinking my hip, especially this right hip, that right piriformis into the mat. Sunctioning up on the fingertips. As you release, we're gonna switch sides to create another 90-90. So now my right leg is creating an L shape, flexing my feet, drawing this left calf towards my hip. Again, you're welcome to stay here and feel this stretch. Or if you wish to take it further, roughly two o'clock to your right knee. Tent out the fingertips, start to draw them forward. Lengthen through the spine, pressing down, especially through that left hip. This may feel different on each side of the body. We're gonna take this one more time each side when you're ready. And you're welcome to hold here as long as you'd like if this feels really good in the stretch. Otherwise, join me for the other side. I've been having some piriformis tightening. So this feels really good to do this. I try and do this a few times a day now. So maybe this is something you can take off your mat and incorporate into your day. If you also have some psoas or IT band or piriformis tightness, lengthen the spine. When you're ready, we're gonna take it one more time to the other side. Getting our little frog positions ready for some frog crunches coming up. From here, return the feet in front of you. Draw the hands behind you. Notice the fingers are pointing towards my bottom. I'm gonna take some bicycle leg crunch motion. So you're welcome to soft bend your elbows, replant the sits bones. We're gonna float the feet I'm gonna point my toes if you'd rather keep the foot flexed, totally up to you as if it wasn't a bicycle pedal. We're going to pedal our bikes, our bicycle, about essentially five times on each leg. So inhale to prepare, float the feet. As you exhale, trying to take it five times, rotating the knee towards the chest. Rooting the sits bones down. I think that was 10 at least. Plant the feet, maybe give a press through the palms, pause here. We're gonna move into frog crunches now. I had mentioned a moment ago. The goal here, similar position, you're gonna leave the hands where they are, fingers pointed to your low bottom. And on the inward movement, your heels are gonna touch the toes spread out like a frog. And you're gonna draw the knees with the exhale towards the chest. And as you inhale, you're gonna extend the legs forward, leave the soles of the feet touching. We're gonna take this 10 times, but if you wish to take more or less, that is entirely up to you. So inhale to prepare, here come the knees towards the chest, heels come in. Inhale, exhale it out. Inhale here, exhale it out. Inhale, you're also welcome to float your hands if you're in a more advanced frog. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. 
Nice job. Cross your ankles, pause here. Maybe place your hands on your knees for a moment. Replant those sits bones to the mat. And then when you're ready, come over to your knee caps. As we come into a tabletop pose, stacking the knees under the hips, wrists may come under the shoulders. Neutral spine, flat back, creases of the elbows pointing forward. Gaze over the nose. Inhale, cow pose, drop your belly, open the heart space, gaze to the clouds, soft bend the elbows. Exhale, cat pose, create that C shape with your spine, relax the head and shoulders. Push the palms into the mat. Press the shins and the feet to the earth. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. When you inhale, cow, also imagine dragging the knees towards the edges of your mat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Come back to tabletop pose, pause here. From here, we'll meet in our first downward dog of the practice. So we start to tuck our toes, lift our hips, come to the first downward dog. You're welcome to keep a more narrow stance of your down dog, pedal the feet, pressing your hands into the earth, spread the fingers wide, press to the thumb and the first finger, Offer your heart space closer to your thighs. Start to come to a still down dog. Imagine dragging the mat behind you with your palms and imagine dragging the mat behind you with your feet. Also, imagine dragging the feet to the edges of the mat, even though they don't move. From here, inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, bend the knees, pause here in bear pose. Offer your heart space closer to your thighs, rise up on the balls of the toes, lift those hips high, press the mat away with the palms. Inhale, ripple forward to a plank, knees or toes, round through the shoulder blades, crown in the heels reaching in opposite direction, shoulders above the wrists, knit the low ribs together, breath in, Exhale, down dog. Pedal the dog again. Take a moment. Maybe you need a falling out breath. Coming back, inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, ripple forward to a plank. Knees or toes, holding here. Again, squaring hips and shoulders to the front of the room, knit the low ribs together, navel pulls to the spine. Imagine a pencil between the shoulder blades. Exhale, down dog. Last time, but from here in our plank pose, we're gonna move our leg as if to a clock. So hopefully you'll follow along with me. Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, ripple forward to plank. And then from here, we'll step this right foot out to the side of the mat, maybe to three o'clock. Underneath to nine o'clock. Back to three o'clock. Back to plank pose. Exhale, down dog. We're gonna take it to the other side. Inhale, lift the heels, exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, ripple forward to your plank. As you exhale, we come to nine. Underneath, back to nine, back to plank. Exhale, down dog. Take a falling out breath. Inhale, lift the heels, exhale, bend the knees. Look at your feet. Bring your hands to the back of our mat. As we come to a ragdoll forward fold, Keep a soft bend in the knees. Maybe you sway from side to side. We do this often in our practice. Continuing to warm up the body. We've already fired up our core. Maybe you graze your fingers on your mat. Relaxing your head and shoulders. You can interlace your arms behind your knees or calf. Keeping the soft bend. Hugging your front body. Maybe you take a few different variations. So 
Slowly begin to bring your big toes to touch. Leave a sliver of light between your heels. Inhale, halfway lift. Shoulders at the height of the hips, hands come to the shins, gaze over the nose. Pull the shoulder blades down the back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise, dig through those heels. Arms come up. Squeeze the glutes and thighs. Exhale, samastiti he. Bring the hands to heart center. So you can set your intention for this practice. Maybe a soft gaze, maybe you shut your eyes. And as we've often done in class, an opportunity to shift and notice the weight distribution in your feet in the three corners of each foot. So maybe you sink back on the heels, lift the toes, replant the toes, shift to the right, to the left. We'll travel to the top of our mat, taking a walk and a squat. This is what it will look like. Release the palms. You'll take a step forward with your right foot. Join the left. Take a squat. Come back up. Step the left. Join now with the right. Take a squat. Another right, another left. We take the squat. Last time left, right, take a squat. Come into mountain pose, pause here. Interlace the hands behind the back, roll the shoulder blades back, breath in. As we exhale, we'll forward fold, bend at the knees, hinge at the hips. Make your way down, maybe the arms come towards the head. Release your hands at the bottom of the breath. Inhale, halfway lift. Again, hands to the shin, shoulders at the height of the hips, gaze over the nose. Exhale, fold, plant the palms, bend the knees, step back to plank. Our first cobra pose, drop the knees, release the toes, bring the heart space to the earth. Palms will stay rooted outside the ribs, or you're welcome to tent them outside the top corners of the mat, thinking cupcake hands, if that is preferred in your practice today. When you um, inhale to prepare, as you exhale and we come to baby cobra, you're gonna peel your heart space up or roll your shoulder blades back. Draw the hands as if to the back of the mat, press the tops of the feet into the earth. So let's inhale to prepare. Exhale, cobra. So roll those shoulder blades back, press the feet into the mat, squeeze the glutes, draw the hands to the back of the mat. Exhale, release. Take an inhale here and exhale, downward facing dog. We're gonna take this one more time at the top of the mat instead of from the back of the mat. Inhale, lift the heels, exhale, bend the knees, look forward. Take a slow path to the top of our mat. You notice I always like to kick my feet to my low bottom. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands to the shin, shoulders at the height of the hips, gaze over the nose. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise. Dig through those heels. Palms face one another. Squeeze glutes and thighs. Knit the low ribs together. Interlace the hands behind the back, roll the shoulder blades back with your breath out. Take one more inhale, and again, we hinge at the hips, heart space comes forward, bend the knees, forward fold. Release the hands at the bottom of the breath. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, plant the palms, bend the knees, step back to plank. Today we're gonna come into locust pose. So inhale, maybe you shift forward, bring the no knees, thighs, toes to the earth. Arms are gonna come long behind you. Think airplane arms. Palms will face down. You'll take an inhale to prepare. As you exhale, peel your heart space up, roll your shoulder blades back. Pulling the throat back, gaze over the nose, spread fingers and toes, think length over lift. Squeeze those glutes, maybe tap the toes behind you. Exhale, release. Inhale here, exhale, downward facing dog. As we move through the rest of the sequence, you'll have an option to take, at times, cobra, locust, 
or a chaturanga. Dandasana, your vinyasa. If you wish to take a chaturanga, remember to lower roughly halfway, bending your elbows, shoulders at the height of your elbows. And then you'll offer your sternum and heart space to the front of your mat. Draw the hands to the back and exhale to a downward facing dog. If you'd like to see how what that looks like, rippling forward, coming down, inhale upward facing dog, and exhale downward facing dog. Take a falling out breath here. Exhale it out. As we move on from here, inhale, lift the right leg up and back. As you exhale, keep the foot flexed, squaring hips and shoulders to the front of the room, toes point down. Again, as you exhale, give the right knee a tap, bring it to the left, back to the right. Inhale, three-legged dog. As you exhale, step the right foot in between your hands, pause here. Start to lower your left knee and toes as we meet in this low lunge. Drawing your hands first to your thigh. Take a moment to draw this right heel back, tucking the left knee forward. So right hip back, left hip comes forward. When you're ready, we'll pause on Dhanayasana. Reaching the arms high, palms face one another. Interlace the hands behind the back, roll the shoulder blades back, breath in. Maybe you gaze up. You'll exhale, bring the palms forward. Sink back and pause for a half split. So digging this right heel and drawing it as if to the back of the mat, which pulls that right hip back. We try and take the arch from the back, so maybe you tent up on the fingertips, or maybe you can balance with your hands at heart center. Notice that this side may feel different from the left when we get there. Inhale, shift forward. Maybe you need to slide this left knee forward. We come back up. And as you exhale, we'll take a twist. So the right arm's gonna come back. This left arm's gonna reach forward. Spreading through the right side body, grow tall through the crown. Inhale, exalted low lunge. Right arm's gonna reach behind you. This left arm is gonna reach high. Fingers reaching for the clouds. We'll exhale and bring the palms back down to the mat. Lift the left knee and toes. Bring the hands inside the right foot and we'll take some ninja lunges. Coming low or staying high if that feels better for your body today. Just a few times. If it's in your practice to do Cossack squats with the hands at heart center, please take that as well. It's a more advanced pose. Start to come back to the top of our mat, but plant the right palm inside the right foot and just stay in a high runner's lunge for a few breaths. And in fact, if you wish to do so, take the left knee down. I'm gonna take that as well. Breathing into this space, you're also welcome to come up on the pinky edge of that right foot, opening up the thigh if that feels good. If not, stay where you are. If the left knee is up, bring it to the earth, meeting us here. Start to walk this right foot slightly back, tucking the left knee forward. Kickstand this left leg starting to come out as I drag my right foot to the back of my mat, coming into a modified side plank. So positioning here, shoulders above the wrist, starting with my right hand towards the hip. You're welcome to stay here. You may reach your right hand high. We've taken these before in class. Maybe you reach your right arm to the front of your mat. Or if you wish to join me, float the right foot up, foot is flexed. And then I'm gonna grab a sugar cane variation of a low side plank with the left knee down, pressing the hand to foot, foot to hand. Inhale, release. And another exhale. We come back. Step back to plank. Move through your options and meet in downward dog.
As we come to the other side, Inhale, lift the left leg up and back. Toes point down, stamp the back wall square, hips and shoulders. As you exhale, we give the left elbow a tap over to the right, back to the left. Inhale, three-legged dog. We'll exhale, step the left foot in between the hands, lower the right knee and toes. Take a moment to find center. First, the hand can come to your thigh. Draw the left hip back. Tuck your right knee forward. Dragging as if the left heel to the back of the mat. When you're ready, Anjani Asana. Knit the low ribs together, palms face one another. Then we'll interlace the hands behind the back, roll the shoulder blades down. Breathe. On your next exhale, plant the palms, sink back for a half split. Maybe you need to adjust your right knee. Dig and drag the left heel to the back of the mat. We take the arch from the back. Toes come towards your nose. When you're ready, inhale, shift forward. Maybe you need to shift your weight into your knee. We come back up to take a twist. Right hand comes forward, left back. Spreading fingers wide. Spreading those ribs on the left and right side body. We inhale, exalted low lunge. Right arm comes up, left arm to your low back. Maybe you gaze to the clouds. Exhale, return the hands to the mat inside the left foot. Lift the right knee and toes. We come to ninja lunges. Take what you did on the other side. Coming back to the top of our mat for a runner's lunge. Left hand plans inside the left foot, staying high if that feels better to you for now. Or joining me now with the knee down on the right side. Again, you have an invitation to open up that thigh on the pinky edge of your left foot or leave the foot where it is. If your right knee has been up, place it and join us with the knee down. Start to walk this left foot in. As I begin to kickstand the right out and drag the left foot to the back of the mat, as we meet in a variation of side plank with the knee down, you are welcome to stay here, feeling a stretch in the side body, or exhale, float the foot up, foot is flexed on the left leg, press the mat away with the right palm, Reach for this left foot in a sugar cane variation. Pressing the hand to foot, foot to hand, breath in. Exhale, float it back up, inhale. And exhale, we return our knees to the mat. We come into our plank and move through your options. And meet in downward dog. Beautiful, come into tabletop pose, joining me here, then sit back on our heels as we find time to take a break for some water, and then I'll meet you back on the mat. See you in a minute. As we come back to our mat, Coming to our downward dog, inhale, lift the right leg up and back. As you exhale, step the right foot outside your right palm. Bend this left knee. Maybe you shift forward and back a few times, then bring the left foot outside the left palm and sink into a yogi squat, a malasana. Again, continuing to open up the hips and thighs, preparing ourselves for more frog-like movements to come with those crunches. Palms will face one another. Use your elbows to open up the thighs, thighs to the elbows, crown comes long, and the heels do not need to touch the earth. As you inhale, shoot it up for a small star pose. So feet can stay rooted where they are. Heels are slightly in, toes are slightly out. Spread the fingers wide. We try and take the arch from the back. Squeeze the glutes and thighs. As you exhale, open the arms into a mountain pose and change the stance of your feet. So now they're roughly hips distance apart, rooted to the mat. 
Relax your arms or bring your hands to heart center. We're coming to a crescent lunge, so if you prefer to keep your hands at heart center or releasing them to your sides. Drawing the right knee up to the chest, foot is flexed. And as you exhale, step it back. Meet in a crescent lunge. You're welcome to keep a soft bend in this right knee, coming up on the balls of the right toes. Thinking about a railroad track and widening if you need to the stance of your crescent lunge. Drawing the uh, left heel to the back of the mat, tucking that right knee forward. When you're ready, we'll pause here and crescent. So drawing the right, right hip forward, left hip back, knit the low ribs together, palms face one another. From here, we're gonna move into a curtsy lunge. I find it easier to bring the hands back to heart center. You may wanna see what this looks like the first time and join me back in the curtsy lunge movement. But we'll be doing this curtsy lunge and coming back to crescent lunge three times on each side. And we'll be taking a leg, um, floating leg pulses as well. So you can always see what this looks like, pause and come back and join me. So coming into the curtsy lunge, you're gonna step this right foot behind the left with a goal of coming into a lunge and then stepping the right foot out. We're gonna take it two more times into a curtsy lunge. This is one. It's okay if you have to reposition, it may challenge your balance. After the third time, stay here. Notice the ball of my foot and the toes touch the earth. We're gonna put the weight into the left leg and start to hover this right foot up. You can flex or point your toes. One, two, three, four, five. Step back to crescent lunge. Hinge forward 45 degrees. Hands are again are at heart center. Think locust pose. We're gonna exhale and meet in a warrior three. Push the mat away. You can keep a soft bend in the standing left leg. Point or flex the foot. Square hips and shoulders to the front of the room. Use a drishti. You can do anything you'd like to do with your hands. Breathe. From here, start to draw, digging through that left heel, hovering this right foot up. Bring the right foot back, up, knee to the chest. As we exhale, we come to figure four. Another challenge to the balance. Maybe your elbows come towards the shins. Maybe your hands come to the mat. Allowing the fingertips to graze the earth. Pause here. When you're ready, slowly come out the way you came in. The knee comes back to the chest. Well, exhale to tree. Wherever the foot lands, it lands. You always have an option to bring it back to the earth to kickstand to your ankle below the knee or above. Leaving your hands at heart center if you need that extra care for your balance. Or maybe you cactus the arms. Or maybe you float your arms like branches. Pausing here. Holding the gaze. Bring the hands back to heart center. Stamp this right foot down. We meet in chair pose, exhale. You're welcome to have a wider stance in your chair pose or the toes, heels may touch, shins, knees, thighs, squeezing towards center. Imagine the feet coming to the edges of the mat, so pulling them apart even though they don't move. Knitting the low ribs together. Again, if your shoulders are bothering you, leave the hands at heart center or maybe you reach them above. Sink the weight to the heels. From here, the arms are gonna come forward. I continue to sink, widening the knees, calming down to the mat. Pause here. We reposition our feet. We're gonna take that frog movement again. 
drawing the heels to touch, toes are gonna come out. We're gonna take it 10 times and your hands can either float off the mat or stay rooted behind you. So you may wanna slide back, positioning the hands. This may come easier now the second time through. Breathe in, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Replant the feet. Come back over to the knees. You're welcome to pause in tabletop pose. And then we'll meet in our downward dog. Maybe you need a falling out breath. Inhale, lift the left leg up and back. As you exhale, we step the left foot outside the left hand. Bend this right knee. Bring the right outside the right. We come back to our yogi squat. Always an opportunity to shift your weight. Maybe you feel a little bit more open the second time. Using the elbows to open up the thighs. Palms pressing together. Inhale, star. Exhale, we come to mountain pose. As we come to a crescent lunge, so relax your arms. Now the left knee comes up to the chest. Maybe you prefer your hands at heart center. Step it back, meet in crescent. Drawing this right ankle back, tucking the left knee forward. So right hip back, left hip forward. Reaching the arms forward and up, we inhale crescent. Pause here, feel the crescent lunge. Then return the hands to heart center. We'll move to our curtsy lunge three times and then those leg pulses. So taking this left foot behind you, bending here, step it out, one. Breath in, exhale down, inhale, step it out. Exhale down, step it out. Putting the weight in the right foot, up on the ball of the left toes, point or flex the foot. One, two, three, four, five. We come back to crescent. Find your balance. Hinge forward 45 degrees, think locust back. Exhale, warrior three pose. Dig through that right heel, right glute. Soft bend the right knee, point or flex the left. Heart space is forward, use the drishti. Then start to push that weight into the right heel. Using the glute to bring the left knee up as we meet in figure four on your exhale. Coming as low as you did slowly with the breath. On the other side, pause here. Coming out of it the way you came in. Return the left knee to the chest, foot is flexed. We exhale and meet in tree pose. Same options with the arms, leave them at heart center. Cactus, grow your branches. You may also want to interlace them behind your back. We've done this already, rowing their shoulder blades back. When you're ready, Bring the hands to heart center, step the foot down, pause here, we exhale to a chair. Two legs become one, sinking the weight back, drawing towards center. Arms reach forward, widen the knees. We're gonna come down to our bottoms for another round of those frog crunches. Maybe you float the fingers. Draw the heels to touch, knees towards the chest. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. This is seven, six, five, four, three, two, whoops, and one. Awesome job. Cross the ankles. Come back into tabletop. You're welcome to take a vinyasa or come into, actually we'll stay in tabletop and you can grab some water and towel off. 
We're gonna take one more break and then we're gonna meet back and join these two flows together and then quiet down the practice. See you in a minute. So as we come back to the mat, we're gonna put these two flows together. Remember, child's pose is always available at any time in this practice. Inhale, lift the right leg up and back. Exhale, right elbow, left, right. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, step the right foot in between the hands, lower your left knee and toes. Inhale, Anjani Asana. Interlace the hands behind the back. Roll the shoulder blades back. Heart space comes forward. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, plant them, sink it back for a half split. Pause here. Inhale, shift forward. Maybe you scoot that left knee. We open up to a twist. Right arm back, left arm forward. Inhale, exalted, low lunge. Exhale, plant the palms inside the right foot. We ninja lunge. I'm going to stay high this time. I'm going to come back to the top of the mat. Place your right palm inside the right foot. Bend the left knee, take a shift, and meet in our yogi squat. Pause, hands at heart center. Really open up those thighs. Inhale, star, mini star. Exhale, mountain. Relax the arms or bring them to heart center. Right knee comes up. Exhale, crescent. I'm leaving my hands at heart center. Do what you like with your hands. Pause here, three curtsy lunges. Inhale up and exhale, lunge. So pause here. Step the foot out. One, tap it out. Two, tap it out. Three, tap it out, hold. Pulse the foot, five, Four, three, two, and one. Step it back, crescent lunge. Hands come back to center, hinge forward. Exhale, warrior three. Inhale, use the glute. Dig through that left ankle. We meet in figure four. Pause here. Breathe. Slowly come out the way you came in. Bring the right knee back to meet in tree. Any variation with the arms you would like. When you're ready, stamp the foot down. Breath in. Exhale, chair. Arms come forward, widen the knees, sink the hips. We've got those frog crunches for 10, meeting you in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, yogis. Over onto the knees. You're welcome to take a vinyasa, cobra, or locust. Or like me, come straight to downward dog if you're ready for the other side. You got this. Inhale the left leg up and back. Over to the elbow on the left, right, left. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, step the left foot in between the hands, lower the right knee and toes. Take a moment. Anjani Asana. Interlace the hands, roll the shoulder blades back. Breath in. Inhale the arms up, plant the palms, shift your weight back, sink for that pause in your half split. Shift forward, maybe slightly tuck that right knee forward. Inhale, we open to a twist. Inhale, exalted low lunge. 
Exhale, plant the palms inside the left foot. Ninja lunges, staying high this time. Walk the hands to the top of the mat, bringing the left hand inside the left foot. Bend the right knee. We come to our yogi squat. We inhale, small star. Exhale, mountain, narrow the stance. Release the hands, maybe they come to heart center. Pause here for the left side. Left knee comes up. We step it back and pause in a crescent lunge. Moving to our curtsy lunges, you may return your hands to heart center, taking it three times. One, step it out. Two, step it out. Three, step it out. Hover the foot, shift the weight. One, two, three, four, five. Come back to your crescent. Pause here in crescent. Hands come to heart center. We meet in warrior three pose. Use that right glute and heel. When you're ready, coming forward. For figure four, when you're ready, breath in. And exhale, coming low. Hinge at the hips. Maybe you float the hands or stay high. Coming out the way you came in. We come to tree. It's a challenge to your balance. Take a new option with your arms. Maybe you cactus. Maybe they interlace. Another opportunity to roll those shoulder blades back. Return the hands to heart center when you're ready. Stamp the foot down. Exhale, chair. Sinking down, widening the knees, reaching the arms forward, coming to our bottoms. For our last round of frog crunches. Again, position the hands or float them. Draw those heels. Here we go. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You did it, yogis. Cross your ankles open. Take a moment to pause here and appreciate what your body just did for you for this practice. So if you want to play quickly with this version of the floating arm pose or floating frog pose, um, we're going to take it from a forward fold at the top of our mat. It's very similar to Titi Baddha Konasana, but instead of the legs coming forward, maybe the knees are soft bend or the legs are straight, we're going to try and cross the feet on one on top of the other at your ankles. I'm going to take this just one on one time, one side, but do play with doing both sides. But for the sake of time, I'm going to only show you on one side. So take it on both sides and then we'll cool it down. Great job today. So let's come into the forward fold. Keep that soft bend, allowing your heart space to come to the thighs. Start to widen the feet about hips distance apart so that you can snake your hands behind the feet, behind your ankles placing them on the mat, sinking the weight in your hips onto your arms. And then pressing through the mat, pressing the mat away, crossing the feet over one another at the ankles, rounding through the back. Think about a cat back, pressing here, and then when you're ready to come out of it, lean forward, plant the toes. How'd that feel? So it's very similar to Titi Bada Kanasana. But again, you're staying more forward and crossing at your ankles. So do play with it on both sides. And then we'll come back 
to downward dog. You always have an opportunity to keep the downward down, down <laughs> blah, blah, your downward dog more narrow. But again, push them out of way and imagine your feet are winding to the edges of your mat. Inhale, lift the right leg up and back. As you exhale, we'll take half pigeon. All this hip opening can definitely bring out some emotions. You might be feeling more emotion coming over you, which is completely natural with hip opening. And you're welcome to stay high or come to your forearms or entirely rest on the earth. As I always tell you, take what you prefer. And if this does not feel good, you can always do pigeon on your back as we've done in class as well. Breathe here. As we come up to the palms or forearms first and then the palms, feeling this stretch, squeezing towards center, we'll come into that mermaid twist. So sink on the right hip, reposition yourself, draw your left leg up and over, sitting on your sits bones, lift your right arm up, and as you exhale, tuck this left knee towards the chest with your right forearm. You can gaze to the left or the back of the mat, and you're welcome to tent up or cupcake the left hand behind you. Breathe here. Slowly return to center, swing this left leg up and over. Come back to down dog. Inhale the left leg up and back. As you exhale, half pigeon. Drawing the right leg long, right toes to the back of the mat, creating an L shape with the front leg, staying as high as you did on the other side, or coming to where you landed before, squeezing towards center, coming back to the ujjayi breath. There's a bit of a challenging balance in this sequence. But hopefully you liked the story, had a beginning, a middle, and an end, and some peak pose play. Squeeze towards center, press up when you're ready, sink on the left hip, swing the leg around, Reposition on your sits bones. Breathe. Left arm comes up. As you exhale, hugging in the right to your side body. Right hand behind you, gaze may follow. Feels good. Inhale, release to center. We're just going to widen our feet in a bridge-like position simply to make our way down to the mat. Pausing here with any last posture you wish to complete your practice. Maybe that's a happy baby, which I like to do, all that hip opening. I also often have played with this as I've talked to you before in class about not reaching for the soles of the feet initially but using the opportunity to draw your knees to your underarms so you can always float your hands up or rest them on the mat. Maybe a soft sway from side to side as you root your hip points down, trying to keep them rooted while you draw the knees closer to your underarms. And then once you're here for a few cycles of breath, you're welcome to grab behind, coming from behind to the heels or reaching for the soles of your feet, giving a small tug perhaps. And notice the difference of what it's like to use more of your hips than the hands pushing your knees and thighs towards the earth. Start to join the toes to touch, knees to the chest. We'll reach the arms to the shins, knees, maybe to the soles of the feet, drawing your nose towards your knees, hugging and using every muscle. You've worked so hard for three, two, and one. Let it go. Amazing job today. Splaying out your heels and just coming into your sweet surrender, our goal pose of Shavasana. Mm -hmm. 
splay out the heels and toes. Release the shins, your knees, the thighs. Root the hip points to the mat. Release the core and chest. Shoulders, roll them to the mat, to the back. Release the forearms. Palms are open to receive. And release the face. Your chin, cheeks, eyes, brow and the sweet top of your head. Notice the support that is under you, around you, and within you. Shavasana. Notice what it feels like to be in your body. Begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Maybe you touch each finger to your thumb. And slowly begin to draw your toes to touch and reach the arms above your head to take a good morning wake up stretch. Inhale through your nose. Send the breath as if to your toes. And as you exhale, slowly begin to bring your knees towards your chest and softly rock from side to side. And then make your way over to your right side using your right arm as a pillow and pause here on the mat. Pause to thank yourself for coming to the mat. To thank your body for what it just did for you during your practice. When we share our stories, we are reminded of the humanity in each other. When we take the time to understand each other's stories, we become more forgiving, more empathetic, and more inclusive. Michelle Obama. When you're ready, slowly press your way up to an easy seat. Joining me at the top of our mat, we'll take one last falling out breath together. Bring the hands to heart center. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, let it out. Inhale the thumb to third eye center, center of intuition. Exhale, bow forward. The light in me honors the light, the beauty, and the yogis have joined for this practice. For I'm so forever grateful. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for this practice. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the Yoga Apothecary YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. And to learn more about how to live a happier, more vibrant life, sign up for our bi-monthly newsletter, The Wellbeing Elixir. And stay tuned for next week when we cover the letter O in the Wellbeing Series A to Z. Namaste.